I would just like to begin by saying how thrilled I am to have human beings in front of me <laughs> to talk to. We weren't really sure how many people were going to come because we were offering this on Zoom and recording it and it was snowy. But holy smoke, doodles, Batman, it is great to see so many faces here. So I welcome you all to Holy Trinity Academy's information evening. Um, I have commandeered the speaking part of this evening, but I promise to be as efficient as absolutely possible. Uh, we will go through a lot of information that I will also include in follow-up emails for you. But before we begin any of that, we will start with a prayer. So if you could please bow your heads. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear God, I thank you for the continual gift we are given in schools to have fresh batches of kids every year. I pray especially for this class as they enter grade 10 in the fall. I pray that they are able to completely enjoy and finish up strong in their junior high schools. And I pray that they are looking forward to senior high as they join Holy Trinity. I pray for their parents, whether this is their first or middle or last or sixth or seventh or whatever number of child it is, that uh, they may be able to guide them in all the right ways. And I pray for our staff as we receive new students each year. We always understand that we are dealing with other people's babies and take the very best care of them that we can. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, first, I have introductions for you. Uh, my name is Carmen Ostafichuk, and I am presently the principal at Holy Trinity Academy, which is going to change this spring before you get there. <laughs> but right now, I still am, and uh, getting you ready for the fall is a very important part of my job. Um, you will have, in case you haven't heard, uh, a different principal come the spring, who many of you know from St. Francis of Assisi Academy because Diana Atkinson has accepted the role of principal at Holy Trinity as I've accepted a different role um, at Christ the Redeemer Catholic Schools. So right now I'm still the boss lady, so we'll continue as is. <laughs> um, I have with me some wonderful people and lovely helpers. This is Melissa Baxter. She is one of the vice principals and Oh, sorry, just a second. Sorry, I've got one slide. To, I've got lots of things going on here. And this over here is Mr. Lytle. Uh, he is another one of the vice principals that I want you to make sure that you know and hopefully we'll be able to meet later tonight. We have two ladies that don't love introductions, but we're gonna do it anyway, standing up at the back where the, okay, if you, can you please wave women? Uh, that is Aileen Lamontagne. And Tony Weidman, if you have been emailing with Tony Weidman because you are a new inquiry, that's Tony. She's real. She's just not on the end of a computer. Uh, so important to know her as well. Uh, the other lady who runs our front office and isn't here today, her name is Nancy Endersby. It's very important. You're going to learn this name. Her name is Nancy. She answers the phone every time somebody calls. We do have a human being answering the phone. Her name is Nancy. And she will call you if your children are absent so she's important human to know as well and you will call her if her children if your children are going to be absent so you'll get to know her and um the other people i want to introduce aren't here they're phantom uh their names are mrs uh, smith and ms williams so many of you here would have received a separate email from them because if you are a learner uh who has an individual student program then you would be registering with them. So lots of names I know. Uh, and again, I'll include that all in the emails as we go forward, uh, but all people that you need to know. So let me tell you about our school. Uh, the mission statement of Holy Trinity Academy is to promote the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. And we, state, we say that our faith is omnipresent and will guide us in all we say and do. I always tell a little story, although it's getting old, uh, that in 1987, there were no Catholic schools in Okotoks, but there was a small group of parents who went to great lengths to establish a school division 
and then build our first Catholic school, which took four years of work. And our first Catholic school was uh, Good Shepherd. And I say that whatever staff and administrators do every day in Christ the Redeemer and at Holy Trinity is honor what those people did. And they very simply wanted a school where, where students could have teachers who were faith witnesses, where they could learn about God in their school, uh, and where they could have a correlation between what they were trying to teach at home and what they were teaching at school. And we honor that every single day in all that we do at Trinity. We have great hope for our students. We say that our hope defies reason and is evidenced by the extremes to which we will go to help them reach their capabilities. You will find at Trinity, as I'm sure you have found if you are from either St. JP2 or St. Francis, or perhaps you're at another school that's really wonderful and good, that our teachers will go to great lengths. They really pride themselves on knowing their curriculum, delivering their curriculum incredibly well, um, assessing you, giving you expanded opportunities to learn, and just teaching you the very, very best way that they can. And we love our students. We say that our students are Christ's gifts to us, which is a lot of S's in a row. And we, we honor Christ by cherishing their academic success and personal growth. So we want you, it's amazing. It's amazing to be at high school because you come in before grade 10 and you're certain size and you're certain maturity and the change by the time that you leave when you graduate in grade 12 is always astronomical. And we love to see that growth and whatever it is that you're interested in, or whatever it is that you want to do, or however it is you want to learn, or what you want to experience at high school, which is going to be super normal for the first year in a long time. Uh, we hope that you will find that you are loved just as much as we love you. So I'm going to have some questions for you. They're true or false questions. You do not need to answer them. Okay, but if you want, you can in your own little mind, or you see, you can say true or false. Okay, here is the first question. Students who graduate from the province of Alberta receive different diplomas based on the courses they were enrolled in. Hmm, just think, is that true or false? If you graduated from the province of Alberta, I did 1991. The answer was true back then. The answer now is false, okay? Regardless of what courses you take, regardless of if you take AP, if you take different immersion courses, if you take different dashes, because there's leveled courses in high school, there's different dashes, does not matter. You all get the same diploma. And these are the requirements, <laughs> harder than I thought. These are the requirements for that diploma. It is written in exceptionally small font because this is also an eye test. Um, <laughs> you need to take English and social to the 30 level in order to graduate. So when you come and choose courses for grade 10, um, the social and English are either what's called a dash one or a dash two, okay? They are different levels of difficulty. And as much as we want to say it differently, dash one is harder than dash two. That's what it is. In grade 10, it's a 10 level. In grade 11, it's a 20 level and in grade 12, it's a 30 level. And whether it's the harder dash one or not, you need to take English and 30, pardon me, English and social to the 30 level, grad requirement. Next grad requirement is you need to take math and science to the 20 level, okay? You need to take, now these are a little different in grade 10. Math starts with either math 10C or math 10-3. Science starts with either science 10 or science 14. I don't know why they don't have the dashes like the English ones. They're just difficult uh, math and science subjects. You'll find the people who teach them. Just kidding, because they're still here. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty good. John's here too. Um, so you only take as a grad requirement math or science to the 20 level. But there are all sorts of different reasons to take sciences and maths further, okay? There's post-secondary reasons. There's other grad requirement reasons. And there's also because you love science and math. So if you don't love them, you only have to take the course two more times, and then you've met that grad requirement. If you do love them and want more knowledge to go on past high school, you can take math 
30-1, okay? So the hardest um, grade 12 math. You can even take calculus after that, which is still called math 31 as it was back in my day. And after grade 10, if you're in science 10, it branches into biology, chemistry, and physics, okay? You need to take visit 10 to graduate and you need to take home, which is like grade 11 health. Uh, it's called career and life management. And you need to achieve at minimum 10 credits in options and 10 credits at 30 levels. So what that means is when you choose which options you're interested in for high school, we want you to choose a big array of those and as many as possible that go to the 30 level. Because even though you only have to take English and social to the 30 level to graduate, you need two other 30 level courses, whether it's a math, a science, a fitness, a gym, a uh, phys ed, a drama, I could list many courses, but you have to take two besides the English and the social. Now, you also don't have to worry about all of this at once because we will meet with you to choose classes for grade 10. We'll see how grade 10 goes. Then we meet with you again to choose classes for grade 11. We see how grade 11 goes. And then you'll make some decisions by then about what's best for you for grade 12. So really, I'll get back in a few minutes what you need to know for your grade 10 stuff the most, okay? This is what I wanna show you is a little bit different, although it's way in the future when you do graduate. So it doesn't matter which courses you take, you all get the same diploma based on the grad requirements. What's different is your transcript. So it's what your transcript will say. If you're taking the courses in French, that will be indicated. If you, if you decide to take an advanced placement at the grade 12 level, that will be in, indicated. And whatever dash you have will be indicated as well. So this is where the courses are, the, the courses that you take matter, they end up on your transcript. This, this is what your high school diploma looks like. Okay, it's mailed to you. Many of the children will be getting theirs because in the first semester, they satisfied all their requirements and this is how it looks. Okay, now second question, true or false? Holy Trinity graduates go above and beyond the Alberta education high school requirement. Think true or false? Hmm, hmm. The answer is true. You actually get two diplomas when you're a student at our school. The one that's mailed to you, the one I just showed you, and a different one that is achieved because in addition to all the Alberta education requirements to be a graduate of Holy Trinity, you also take a religion class for each year that you're enrolled in a traditional classroom setting from our school. You do a service project, which is anything that helps people in need or betters the community. So you do 30 hours of service and then submit a reflection on your service hours and you take a minimum credit load. And minimum credit loads are really smart. What it means is that when you come in 10, you take a full course load. No one is allowed to have a spare in grade 10. Your parents might remember spares. They're great time, okay? You're not allowed a great time in grade 10 to have any spares, okay? And in grade 11, you can only have one with parents' permission. Your parents have to say, I give you permission to not go to class from this time to this time and to instead have a great time. In grade 12, you can choose to have two spots on your schedule that are spares, okay? But the reason minimum credit loads are really smart is because you have to get 100 credits in order to graduate. Should have mentioned that on the first slide. You have to achieve 100. And if you don't take any spares at the end of grade 10, you'll have 41. At the end of grade 11, if you just take a spare, you'll have 35. You're well on your way to the 100 credits that you need. Now, credits are achieved by taking and passing courses. Roughly every course gives you five credits, except for courses that are every other day. Those are religion, phys ed, religion, calm, religion, and learning strategies. But for the most part, every um, course, once you pass it, is five credits. Oh, and once you achieve all those things, you will walk across this beautiful altar and receive a Holy Trinity leather bound diploma that looks like this, except it'll be closed. All right, some considerations for the courses 
that you're going to go into. So when we choose courses for the fall, we have some boundaries because it's like, you can't come and say, you know what? I am done with social studies, never taking it again. Well, you could, but you won't graduate. So we don't let you say that. So the requirements are what you have to take, okay? There's also the whole act around your interests. And that's where I'll start to talk a little bit about options. We have exceptional options at Trinity. And I find sometimes kids come and they wanna do all sciences and all, all, like all the not as fun stuff. I really encourage you, I, I put the link in the email that I sent, it has our little option booklet on there that goes through each of the options that we have. And I'd encourage you to just try things you would never try in any other arena because they are so exceptional. And I'll talk more about them in a moment. You do need to consider future plans, but I don't want you to be stressed out about future plans either. If you take all the courses you can and get the best marks you can, you'll be set up for post-secondary. I think that's the best advice you can ever give at grade 10. You take the best courses you can, you take as many as you can in grade 11 and do as well as you can. And don't worry too much because we'll set you up as we go. When we meet, uh, we will go through a sheet like this and we'll go through it each year. We will choose and it's really determined um, by many things and your grades, your aspirations, your grad requirements, et cetera. And all we got to choose is in the grade 10 column. And like I said, we see how grade 10 goes and we choose in the grade 11 column. We see how grade 11 goes and then we choose in the grade 12 column. If you are curious about post-secondary and I have a daughter who's, who's in university now and I have a son who's in grade 12 and as a principal, um, I've never been as into post-secondary as I think a lot of the parents that I served. I did what, what I said in terms of take all the courses you can and do the best you can. But it's only fair that you know that you have the opportunity to learn all sorts of things about post-secondary. I just realized this is an old picture because this is our old website. Um, so pretend this is updated. And on it, there's a tab on our website called Student Futures. And Student Futures has information about graduation and it has information about post-secondary. And we have a lovely, lady named Michelle Sand, and she works out of the library, and all day long she meets with kids in grades 10, 11, and 12 to discuss my blueprints, which is kind of what do you want to be when you grow up, to discuss post-secondary options, to help kids get something called the My Pass account, where you get your transcript. She, you could, your child can meet with her at any time, and as many times as they want to try and map out a path, we have post-secondary um, institutions come and present. A lot of it's been visually, you know, virtually, which is visually, I guess. A lot of it's been virtually lately, but she has post-secondary um, institutions come and present and she advertised for that. She also takes care of scholarships and advertises for those applications. So know that, although this is an old picture, she is in the library and we still have it under student futures on your website, on our website. And I like to show this, this is from a couple years ago, but this is just the stats of, um, this would have been, I haven't been able to pull these stats, but this is um, how many kids in one graduation class in I think 2019, I think it was, how many ended up going for a bachelor's degree, um, how many ended up uh, graduating in a professional program, we tried to keep track of them and what they were going into for the next year. What's more curious, I find, is how many kids actually went to Calgary, to Lethbridge, to Edmonton, how many stayed in Alberta, went to different provinces, went uh, out of province or out of country, you can see that stat. And I'll mention the trades there, because we have a work experience program, these kids are maybe in second semester grade 11 or grade 12. And our division has worked really hard advertising with different companies um, in order to have what's called a RAP program, a registered apprenticeship program. Uh, so we have kids, we have a handful of kids going through that as well. If that is your path, we just need kids to get a few of the main grad requirements under their belt before we go that route. They still graduate, it's just a different pathway, and we always need the companies to match them up if they want to do any sort of apprenticeship. Next question, true or false? 
you will choose your classes on your own and show up the first day and try to find them. It'd be kind of fun, actually. <laughs> actually, fall of 2020, this is what happened. The kids had a map, okay? Arrows, okay? <laughs> This is false, this is false. This is what we're going to do. I know my email and I sent it again yesterday is so long, but what you're going to do is you're going to meet with Mrs. Smith and Ms. Williams, if they've already emailed you, I mentioned them, if you have an ISP, okay? You're gonna meet with them. If you don't have that scenario in your life, then you're going to choose to meet with myself or Mr. Lytle or Mrs. Baxter. Okay, we have various times throughout the day that you book with us, and we have two evenings, and you book with us with the information that I sent, and it opens tomorrow, and um, you can, if you want, we'd love if you came to see us, but we also have a Zoom link, so you can be wherever you need to be, and we did this last year, it worked really well, your child can be at school wherever they are. They just go to the office, they have a room for them, you're on Zoom, they're on Zoom, we're on Zoom, and we can duke it out that way. Or you can drive and pick them up and bring them to our school, whichever works for you better. Then, um, one about one week, and you're used to this with Power School, there will be, your schedules will be viewable, and you'll know what actual classes you get. So we will sit down, we'll look at your grades, discuss what options you want to take, we'll choose those courses, but actually when you have those courses and where they are and who your teachers are will be about a week before. We have next year um, staggered entry. And I hope I got this right because I think they switched the alphabet. I'm not positive, but if it's wrong, I won't be here. Come, <laughs> come at some time the, night, the day before okay? and you will we'll take care of you <laughs> or someone else will. Um, true or false, you are able to choose all of the classes on your schedule next year. This is false, okay? We're guided by the requirements. We're guided by what's a suitable course for you. We're, we're guided by your grades. You're guided by your aspirations. We're guided by the options that you want. So this is a typical grade 10 schedule in that you have two semesters, okay? So for the first five months, you'll take four courses. It can be in any order. Just math first because it's my favorite, but it can be in any order. Second semester, four courses. The two classes that I mentioned are every other day and our three and three credits are Phys Ed 10 and Religion 15. That's why this adds to 41. Uh, your courses can land anywhere, your core courses or your option courses. But this is kind of how it looks. The core courses are dictated really by your aspirations and your current grades, okay? The options are your choice. We just really ask when you look through that option booklet, choose as many as you can that go to the 30 level. There's a couple that will be um, only 15 and 25. They have a five at the end. It just means the curriculum was developed a different way, okay? But if they stop at the 25, it means they don't go to grade 12, and back many slides, we talked about grad requirements, which you need to take enough courses to the 30 level. So I just want to keep that in mind. Now, we want you to look at those options and figure out what your top five are. You'll get, your, you'll get three, but we asked for five so that we have some wiggle room. One year I did the stats and we had like 89% of people got their top three, which is phenomenal, but it could be in that 11% that you get number four or five. So please come with your top five. And you'll see there, we have incredible fine arts options, okay? If you're a band student, I mean, I love hearing the band every morning. The jazz band is playing. They are remarkable. We have drama, which I was, they were playing music too today. I think it's such an incredible place to spend some time uh, for sure. We have art classes, then we have digital art classes, which is what new media is called. New media is under a different category called CTS, which just means it's broken up different. We have construction, which, I mean, it's a dying art to work with your hands, so I encourage as many people as possible to do construction. Um, there's also, kids really like the 
the more active courses like fitness and nutrition because I get to pump iron and get all buff, okay? And there's yoga option, which has been popular over the years as well. We have foods, which is always popular because we eat what we make, which is good um, and delicious and smells wonderful, <laughs> okay? Uh, there are kind of one-of options, things like creative writing and film studies and, and um, cr uh, just creative writing. Oh, and sports med, pardon me. I think I've maybe mentioned all of them, but regardless, they're all in the booklet. And we, I really just encourage you to try something different because kids will come and say, no, I've done that. And, or no, I'm not interested. I've never tried that, which is interesting. Um, so please try as many as you can. Next to your first question. <laughs> I hope not. Okay. Your average, your grades determine whether or not you are happy in the future. Super false. Oh, and the font of this went really, really weird, but I'll explain what that font is. There's three averages to consider. At the end of the year, we take all of your courses and we weight your average and you get an honor roll certificate if you're in a certain category. That's on our website, okay? That's an honor roll average and you get a certificate, okay? I've had my own child throw the own certificate I gave them in the recycling, but all it is is a certificate, okay? And it's important because it's important to do well and it's important to get rewarded. When you're going to post-secondary though, you choose your top five. So sometimes kids will say to me, I want to drop this course because it's bringing down my average. But I would say, well, it's only bringing down your average for which certificate you put on the fridge. In terms of going to post-secondary, the more 30 levels you have to choose from, the better, because you're gonna have to look at categories A, B, and C. And if you have a whole bunch of courses in each of those categories, you can choose your top marks in each of them to have the most competitive average. So the more to the 30 level is the better, okay? So there's different averages, honor roll, which is important, and then post-secondary, uh, which is also important, but different. There's also the Rutherfords and different scholarships and they all have different criteria, all of them. People ask me about scholarships all the time. The most important advice I can give you is that they don't just want top marks. They want you to be doing service and they, they want you to be superhuman. You have to have great grades. You have to be extremely athletic. You have to, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, do a, all sorts of service work, okay? Give blood, save lives, do all sorts of things. And then, you know, you get some service or some scholarships, okay? A couple guidelines that I just want you to know in terms of marks. Um, um, we have learning strategies at our school, which are courses to help if you need help in your courses, okay? Many people who will be registering with Ms. Williams and Mrs. Smith will automatically be registered in those courses but also people who register with Jamie, Melissa, and myself will be. So if you're kind of borderline, because we kind of say if your mark is better than 70, you should do this level, okay? If your mark is better than 90, maybe you'd be interested in advanced placement. But if you don't really want to do a dash two or a 14 level, you want to try the higher one, learning strategies might be for you, okay? And if you're in that boat, you're like, oh, I'm dancing around these marks in the 60s, okay? Ms. Baxter is our AP coordinator and AP is advanced placement. Really, if you don't get a change on your transcript until you're in grade 12, okay? Um, but we structure our school so that you can take math, AP, science, AP, social and English in grade 10. And it's an accelerated course. So if you love those courses, you wanna learn faster, you wanna learn more, you want that opportunity and your grades are super good, like I have here, then that might be something you're interested in, okay? It's called advanced placement. And after we're done here, Mrs. Baxter is gonna go back to the library in the school and she'll answer AP questions there. She also has a special Zoom call set up uh, for um, the French classes at St. JP2, is it tomorrow? It's tomorrow and she's gonna answer French immersion classes because. She can talk in French and I can't, and then they, she will answer them to everyone there, okay? Now, Mr. Lytle said, I bet you can't be 40 minutes. My last slide, Jim. All right, so here's what we're, <laughs> 
here's what we're gonna do now, okay? Feel good about myself because that was good and brief. Um, invite you to please, there's currently a basketball game. There's a lot of people in the gym, so you might not wanna go in there too much. Um, Mrs. Weidman, Tony and Aileen, I think are gonna be at the school to give you maps. If you would like to, I'm excited for you because the last two classes they didn't get to see, well, two years ago, they didn't get to see anything. This year, they did come in a little bit the night before, but you guys get to see it well in advance. Um, it says enhanced, but this thing where it says enhanced French in the kindergarten, just ignore that. Um, that's just, just ignore that. I call it a kindergarten wing because as you know, we had kindergarten classes, some of which would it be you? No, I think they've, no the wrong, wrong grade, maybe younger, older, doesn't matter. I won't be here either. Um, they, it's an area of the school I still call that. Um, Mr. Lytle, Mrs. Baxter and I will be here to ask questions. And then, so you can just go to the school, cruise around, you know, the custodians will still be working. It might be dark in some places, but take a map, check everything out. And then uh, tomorrow is when you go on to conference manager to book an appointment to meet with one of us to choose your classes. And I super thank you for coming because as I said, it's really nice to have human beings to speak with. So thank you everyone at home. Goodbye everyone at home.